news. Alan drove home the dagger that killed the dragon, although I think noble knights don't step over the freshly killed. And some guys have killer instinct on the mound and a yellow stripe off of it. Should Roger face Mike again eye to eye? All eyes on us. Why? Because Trish Stratus is here. So too, Jamal Mayer, CJ, and the junkyard dog bring it on. The record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. <laughs> Today's show is huge. Big guest NBA Finals underway. Stanley Cup Finals on the line. Beautiful women, red hot musicians, black guys playing hockey, and the JYD. This show is really the opposite of tele television. But this guy is exactly what every pro athlete should be. He drove overnight to come to the city of Toronto, and since you crossed that border, we have loved you, and I speak for all Raptor fans saying, please come back. Junkyard dog Jerome Williams on OTR. Nice to see you, Jerome. Thank you very much. How good a show is this? Because we got a guy from one of the best teams in the National Hockey League and one of their key players who a lot of people say will help them win a Stanley Cup in the future. He's a good Toronto boy, Jamal Mayers on OTR. Nice to see you, Jamal. Good to be here. And how good is this? Speaking of uh, good folks from Canada making good in the States, she's wearing the Canadian flag on her chest. <laughs> Trish Stratus, uh, we met you a couple of years ago, and things have just been wonderful for you since, and we love that because we think you're pretty special. Well, we think you're pretty special. Aw, thanks. And CJ, uh, we love you too because you're in three deep. We had Josh Moore on a couple of weeks ago, but you're the guy that we really wanted. CJ, great to welcome you to the show. You'll tell us about three deep later on. Meanwhile, today, Allen set the tone for game number one, but are the Sixers really off the hook? Barry's game is off the hook, is throwing at him out of line. And guys go to the golf course to escape from their wives. Does being a bachelor keep Tiger from getting his tail in a knot? Good looking, Rich. His tail ain't in a knot. But first of all, game six tonight. To paraphrase an old friend, it could all be over, which is appropriate because the end of everything has been the big Stanley Cup theme all along. Usually when you say there's no tomorrow, it's a metaphor. Really, you lose, you wake up, Regis is on television, you have breakfast, and the rest of the summer is ahead. But for a handful of guys, the idea of it being all over is very real, as in dead, or at least permanently sleepy. Forsberg won't play tonight. Arnett will. Let's start with Jason Arnett. Should he have been in Game 5 and not resting when the doc said, you're okay? Well, <laughs> it, I think it depends on whose decision is it. You know, you have to come down to. Um, if you're injured and they, the doctor gives you clearance, well, that's fine. But is it up to the longevity of, of you out there? You've got to think about yourself out there, too. You know, I mean, it's... I think, think the worst thing we could do is start questioning his uh, professionalism. And what you're saying is that he, he was cleared to go, the doctor said he could play, and then he decided not to play. I'm going to stand by him as a teammate and even as a, a fellow player because you don't, want, you don't want... The worst thing you can do is a guy crying wolf, and I'm going to go with him. He didn't think he was well enough to play. He's shown he's a competitor. You don't want a guy playing when he's hurt. I definitely have to agree with you, Jamal, just, just from an athlete's standpoint. You know, doctors, doctors, you know, they're always going to say their piece, but at the same time, you know, the professional and the player knows his body. And uh, if a guy isn't able to play, you know, he has, to, he has to take a stance on that. Yeah, I agree, too. I mean, he's just... I can know, tell you we're moving on quickly from this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I disagree. No, no, no. I mean, Jay, you know, I mean, if, he, if he has to play, he's, he knows his body. He knows what he wants to do. I mean, he's not going to miss the biggest game, you know, of his career, you know, because he's not, you know, he's not ready to go. He, so so he if you're saying go, that it's a personal choice, which is what you guys are saying, that may be relevant, but also how often is it a factor in professional sports? If a guy says, you know what, my wife's having her baby. It's a playoff game, but I want to go watch the birth of my child. That's a personal choice and not one that a lot of guys are necessarily offered. So if it's about you choosing, why isn't it that way across the board? Hmm. Well, I know for our business, it's like, if one gets injured, it's sort of like, well, it is up to you. I mean, really, it's ultimately up to you. And, and, and in a player's case, it's up to you as well. But, I mean, I'm going to think about my... I'm going to think about my health as well, but I'm going to also think about if I don't go out there, then the storyline with me is done, so someone else will take my yeah, spot. Because, you, because you're saying it's his personal choice, but the truth is, in the World Wrestling Federation, athletes are expected to go out there and perform night after night. And if the doctor clears you, you're going to have a tough time going to Vince and saying, hey, it's raw tonight, but I can't go. Right. And, and it's, you're going to have a tough time because you know that he's going to be like, all right, that's your decision, and you're going to go out there and you won't be on the storyline next week. So that's up to you to it's go out there. It's a unique decision. You know, it's a unique decision. Whatever, whatever profession you're in has its pluses and minuses. So 
You're going to have to make a decision. Based so on let, let's take the, the, the flip side of that, which is a guy like Peter Forsberg, who says, you know what, I might like to try to give it a go in game six or seven. After all, the Stanley Cup's on the line. He ruptured his spleen a month ago. It's usually six weeks until you come back. And his coach, Bob Hartley, said, no, it's not worth risking your life. But if a player wants to risk his life, not told that, but if he wants to, if it's informed consent and says, I want to give it a go, should he have that chance? I think he should have that chance, you know, just, just from a player standpoint. Um, but I really think that if a doctor's saying you shouldn't play, that you know, your, best, your best interest is to really go with the, with but the if doctor. But the like, if the team is, you know, what happens when Forsberg comes in and, and he's not up to par? Like, what happens, like, you know, I want to play, but then somebody else is, you know, he's hurt. And if he's not playing, I mean, up to par, what does that do? I yeah, mean, well, if, if it was me, I'd want to go in there and I'd, you'd have a meeting with the coach and tell him, listen, I think I can play, I can go, and then, I mean, even For Forsberg at 80% is going to be better than their fourth line guy. So you say give him the there. chance if he I'm wants saying, to go. I'm saying let him play, and I, I told my brother this, I think that if it goes to game seven, he'll play. Wow. Well, I mean, in, in your case, Eric Snow, uh, part of the 76ers team that beat you in the next round, he's got a, a broken bone in his ankle, and the doctors tell him if you play, you could jeopardize your career, but he steps in and goes. Hey, you know, guys in, guys in my profession, they play hurt all the time, and whenever you have an injury that you feel as though you can compensate in such a way that you can still perform and help the team win, you know, you have to go out there and give it a shot. Okay, but let me go, th let me go through your, your physique. Your foot's broken, and the doctors say, uh, hey, you could jeopardize your career. It's a playoff game. Do you play? Well, it depends on how my foot is feeling. I had a, a high ankle sprain early, uh, early on this year, and technically I was supposed to be out six to eight weeks. The doctor said six to eight weeks. I came back a week and a half. So you know. I think it comes down to a matter of pulling through for the team. I think in the World Wrestling Federation, Triple H, just recently, he tore his, uh, his uh, quadricep. And so you could see it if you watch the match. He actually t tears it throughout the match. He's limping around. But yet he goes in, finishes up the match, and finishes off the storyline so that they continue with the storyline knowing he'll be out. You've just come out of two straight heartbreaking losses in the playoffs, two straight seasons, right? Mm -hmm. If you were in a place of Eric Snow and the doctor said, hey, your career could be over, Jamal, if you go in there and play, are you in there? Well, oh, you're there. <laughs> oh, you're so there. Let me hear it down there. I, I, I'd have to be like, but I have to also have to think about it, like for the Forsberg situation as well. He's does he have a family? You know what I mean? I'm single. I don't have anyone else depending on me to provide for them. If I have kids and I have to look after my family, then it might, you know, affect and you'd my. You'd also decision. give Jamal some more information. Eric Snow just signed a contract last year. Right. You know, for five years. Right. Five years. Yeah. So, so, I jump all over that. He's he's not only you know not really jeopardizing his career. He's really just going at it, just saying, hey, I'm going to give it up for the team. All right. As we go to break, you were talking about family. Let me read you a quote. It says, "Let's face it. A wife can sometimes be a deterrent to a good game of golf. The level he's at, the finite little problems, would destroy him." That's Earl Woods about his son Tiger. I guess he left out the parts. Son, anonymous sex with strangers is good for your short game. TSN.ca slash OTR. We ask, would you rather have a loving wife or a two handicap? Mel Gibson told us what women want. Tell us what men want. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Sometimes, though, people get fired just to mix things up a bit. It yeah. might change the dynamic of the whole system, and perhaps getting rid of him is like uh, getting rid of Jesus. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's a big deal. That kind of mixed up. One of the Lou brothers, anyway. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Jesus and Lou, awesome third baseman. Steak. Order the steak. Uh, I... I... When he holds a baseball, Roger Clemens is armed and dangerous. But how dangerous does he look today? According to the New York Post, not very. Here's the deal. Clemens and the Yankees are at Shea next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Rocket Roger was supposed to pitch Sunday night, but manager Joe Torre has disarmed the Rocket, changing his rotation and keeping Clemens away from the New York Mets, the angry Mets. Remember last season, Clemens drilled Mike Piazza in the head. With that history, there was little doubt that he was headhunting. Then three months later, he changed weapons from a ball to a jagged bat. Mike Piazza getting sawed off. He throws it right back at him. So I ask you, does Roger Clemens look like a suck to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I mean, he, the 
best thing in sports is rivalry. And, I mean, he owes it to the fans to go out there and, and provide that rivalry and that, if you know. he throws a bat at a dude. You know, I mean, if he, br he threw the bat at the guy. Come on. You know what I mean? Like the least he can do is pitch running. again. He's setting up and he's running. That's come what he's on. doing, you he's know? He's got a pitch. He owes it to He's got to yeah. jump in there <laughs> and come out and say, hey, you know, I want to play this game, coach. I, I have to be in this. This is, you know, it's all about determination, who's going to come out on top. The fans get involved. They get hyped up. It's, it's great yeah, for the sport. Exactly. That's what sport's all about. That's why people love it because, you know, it's the emotion that's behind it. And uh, I think that... Uh, It'll just add to it. I know I'll be watching. Yeah, it'd be the storyline, something you know that's missing. Yeah, exactly. You know, this guy's sitting over here on the sideline watching, and the other players out there hitting home runs. Yeah. Okay, I, I want to take this to a different individual because you're all talking about respect, right? I want to take this immediately to Barry Bonds, and Barry Bonds, um, because there was not a dissimilar situation. Bonds is off to the fastest start in the history of Major League Baseball: 31 home runs two nights ago. Take a look at the tape. He is facing the San Diego Padres, and in the third inning, he hits a home run. And it's all about the culture of sport, right? Because in the fourth inning, he comes up to bat, and a pitcher throws right at his chin. He was irate. He made a move to the mound. Is that disrespectful to, right now, the greatest player in the game? Not, not even close. If you're the pit, not even close. If you're the pitcher, he's already blasted you out of the park, right? <laughs> So you throw it right at his head. That's, that's disrespectful. No no yeah. That's they, like somebody throwing a ball in your face. Okay, no, no, they, no, no, no. Last last year, year, two years ago, would they have done that to McGuire? Throwing at his head. Definitely not. If you're that's the other the team, they never would have done if you're, that. It doesn't matter. If you're the other team and I'm the pitcher, I'm throwing, I want to put him off his game. I'm going to throw it right at his head. Putting yep. the man off it his game, that almost took his head off. Oh, no, man, he can move out of the way. He he's he's he a big boy. He knows, he knows it's coming. Would well, they have done that to him? Okay, okay. Come on, Hold on. No doubt, but it is disrespectful. I'm sorry, I missed that little reference. That's like a slow mind coming at you and you know you're not prepared for it. Yeah, but isn't that the whole purpose of it? I mean, you talk about putting him off his game. What's going to do it? better than that. You throw at his head, all of a sudden, next time he's leaning back a fraction of an inch. Absolutely. And that makes all the difference. Absolutely. I think that's part of the dynamic of, the, as a pitcher, the head games and throwing at the guy, yes. backing him off the plate, you know, like showing this is Because your game's mouth. all about the dynamic, right? Your game's all about putting fear in the opposition. If you get in their head, and two of the greatest players to ever do that in the playoffs were Claude Lemieux, who was the master of it, who sat on our, our show and said, I want to get in that guy's head. And Scott Stevens, who whacked a rookie with 10 seconds left in the game, all because he wanted to set the tone for the next game. It's all about that. It is, but this is different. You know, I think that they, they got to show him some respect. So why, why don't you think they want to? Why do you have to show him respect? Well, it's a game. Is, show the man some respect. I mean, throw a curveball. Throw no. something. But he'll in, you know? smack it out. I mean, that, yeah, he's, he's, he's the best it. player exactly. right now. Well, hold on. we got to go to a wide shot on this, because I agree with what you're saying. There. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No. So basically, no, no, wait a minute. Okay, so. In basketball, you know, if I can jump over you, you're gonna you're gonna take me out of the air. I mean, what? Okay. It does happen in your okay, game. Okay, well, all right then. Well, then you gotta be prepared for KYD. Do, do, do I remember oh, Scott? Yeah. Oh, oh, everybody's, everybody's coming out. Like Allen Iverson's coming through the lane. Scott Williams stands the steps the elbow out. Derek Anderson, same sort of thing. I mean, it does happen in your game, right? Yeah, well, those you know those guys are slower. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Iverson, so slow, right? He can hardly no, I mean, move. Scott there. Williams. Okay. Let me ask you this, Jamal. You said that they wouldn't have done it to Mark McGuire. Yeah. Why not? Why do you think they wouldn't have done it to him and they do it to Barry Bonds? I don't know. Maybe there's more respect. I don't really know like how guys feel about uh, Bonds, but uh, I know going to a few games, uh, you would think that they'd like walk McGuire. Like, he's going to hit a home run. Why even pitch to him? But they pitched to him. They never pitched at him. They always pitched in an area where he seemed to be able to hit home runs. Underrated, though. I mean, you know, Mark McGuire had all that hype, and, and Barry Bonds hasn't gotten that hype that he, you know, Rightfully deserved, I guess. So, kind of, I guess I think that's kind of like an in your face. I, I, I think the, the it question matter. is, it does. Yeah, but, it doesn't matter. But, but I wonder why, because I think Jamal is 100% right. I think I, I got to do one of these. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're I think he's 100% right in the sense that McGuire would not have been knocked down. And I think the reason is that McGuire has kissed the media's ass for years, and Barry Bonds has always refused to do it. But you why? Know? That could have a lot to do with it. But, I mean, you know, the guy, if you're a pitcher, he's already hit you out of the park, and you're standing there. What, is he thinking about what the media said? He doesn't care what the media. He wants to push him off the plate. Bottom line, that's all he wants to do. Yeah, but Mark McGuire, he's had like three, four home runs in a game. But you know, Mark McGuire probably he get like hit what, off the six, plate. Five. You know, he probably he, maybe the pitchers <laughs> were afraid to get their butts whooped. Like if you know, like hitting Mark McGuire off. Uh, you know. All right. On that note, we go to break because we got to talk about game number one. Everybody says this is a shock. The 76ers beating the Lakers was it a surprise to you, 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 and you? We'll find out when OTR returns. Stay with us.
Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by Coke. Enjoy. And by Tenactin. Get boom. Tough actin, Tenactin. The result of the first game of an NBA final is hardly ever a surprise. Somebody's got to win it, and these are theoretically the two best teams. But this one, to many, was a surprise. Laker fans arrived with brooms but left with wait, receipts. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. See, no, that's the thing. People expected, you know, the Lakers to come out and really just take control of the series. It's been pumped yeah. all week. Sweep, sweep, sweep. You're not sweeping the Eastern Conference team. No. I don't care what happens. Just because you got beat by them. No, we got beat, but you're not going to sweep. I don't care if it's Toronto Raptors, Philadelphia 76ers. If they're on the East, they're not getting What have they been doing all along? Sweeping. They've been sweeping, but that, that's out west. I'd say They've that. They've been the intimidating Sixers, those guys I, all year long. I'd say the Sixers had one of their best games, one of their better games. One of their best. They played better against us. Okay, but then how did L.A. play? That was probably one of their worst games. L.A. Was LA, what, Hold on, LA didn't have their best. to say, because she is busting him good. <laughs> L.A. Didn't have their, L.A. didn't have their best game. I'll give you that. Kobe was off. You know, he didn't, he wasn't, 15 points, he's, he's averaging 31. But the, the mere fact is man that man. man for man, you're going to have to guard Allen Iverson. I think that they figured it out a little too late. Mm -hmm. Coach Phil figured out that um, Tyrone Lue should have been guarding Allen earlier in the game and not Kobe. Allen is, you know, 6 feet, 165 pounds, Are you saying speed, that speeding bullet. Win? Hmm? You're saying Philly's going to win the series? Look at that smile on his face. I'm just He's saying, like you have to, you have, they have to make an earlier adjustment. <laughs> you know, they learned later in the game, but by that time it was too I late. Allen was on a roll, 46 Lakers, points. The Lakers have been, they've been resting for what, two weeks? Exactly. Right? They've been they're, they're, the now they're just, okay, the rest is <laughs> off and they're right. ready to go. You know, Look at the sand off. Get the sand off. They've been helping them. Playing golf, you know, all of a sudden they got a game. This is the beginning. I mean, they're just, that was their worst game yet. You'll just see it's going to So this, you're talking about a team that should be sweeping them? That's the way you're talking about it. You know, this is the first time I've ever heard anyone say, well, they're never going to sweep an Eastern Conference team. I mean, everybody said all along. When I mean everybody, I mean people even in basketball. I mean, no one knows more than Trish Stratus, and she said, there's no way that they can lose to Philadelphia. They swept San Antonio. Are you telling me that, that Philadelphia is tougher than San Antonio? Yes. Could you have beaten San Antonio in a seven-game series? Look at here. I know. I know one thing. It, it would have been a tough match. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, that's what the JYD is going to bring. I'm bringing some noise. Okay, let's talk, I'm, 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 let's talk some JYD. I'm coming in there with some fight and some fury. Yeah, but they're coming in there with two big guys, too. Right. Hey, hey you know, we got to hold our own. Well, how many points have they Kobe had? They two seven-footers and, you know, Shaq, one Shaq. Kobe had, what, like um, 15 points? 15 points. Okay. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all up from here, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Right. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. You know, but, you know, Georgetown's going to be bringing the heat. <laughs> Georgetown's bringing the heat. Oh, oh so it's a hoyas. And now it's starting to all come together. Now. Were, were you guys roommates? I predicted. Were you guys roommates we with Alan Iverson? We have to be Alan Iverson. Me and Alan were roommates. Wait a minute. Now, is this a first cr close connection here? Now it's, it's not it's about... Be close. It's, you know, aren't we a tag team? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't leave me. Hold on. Hold on. That shouldn't be happening. <laughs> Are you not refereeing her match? Well, see, that's, that's, that we'll here. that's nothing. Match. That's right. That's that's totally separate from this. <laughs> All right. This I got is the show thing. Yeah, okay. this is the show thing. I get into the ring. It's okay. straight down the middle. Well, well, we'll have to talk more about that later on. But I got to ask you about Allen Iverson because when he came up to professional basketball, he admitted he was not ready. He said people expected me to act like I was 30 ready. when I was 20. He wasn't ready. And do you think? that that places unfair expectations on what is a kid who's now playing with men. And therefore, the next leap is to say, do high school players belong playing in the NBA? If Iverson, who went to a big-time school like Georgetown, isn't ready, how about guys coming straight out of high school? Hey, it's a tough decision. It's a tough decision. That's probably one of the hardest decisions that well, let's make it players right have to make. And, you know, who's to say that a guy shouldn't come into the high school, into the NBA out of high school? All right, we've got to go to break. We'll you don't know his family situation. NHL guys getting drafted at 18. They play okay, the next we'll continue year. this when we return. We'll take a break. As we go to break, we want to know what you have to say about the guests and the show in general. OTR, Barry Bonds is one of the best players of all time. I think the question should be, is Willie Mays in the same class as Bonds? And we were asking why... Are these two guys not compared? We asked our audience that. There's our website, there's our email, there's our fax number. Back with more OTR. We'll continue on the obvious thing in a moment.
I don't agree. What about what about politicians? We scrutinize them like crazy. Actors, we go into their private lives like crazy. Why should athletes be uh, any different? Well, it's not being different right now. I mean, we don't know that these athletes have been involved in anything illegal itself. Someone else has been charged with racketeering itself. But the thing is, I think it's afraid. Itself. Athletes are afraid they're going to get tarnished, right? That their image is going to be tarnished. And for some reason, athletes are supposed to be held up on this pedestal that they don't do anything wrong. Steak! I want to show you throw these guys out here, it's going to be outstanding, and we were right for a change. Great to welcome these two guys to the show for the first time sitting side by side. Now, now what's the brotherhood between you guys? <laughs> we're like a tag team, but not really. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Well, see, what, 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 on the show, we're a tag team. Hold on, you're stuttering. Let me, let me stand here. <laughs> <laughs> Take it over. <laughs> June 16th at the ACC, is WWF is coming. And it's going to be Battle of the Divas. So it'll be me and Jacqueline against Lita and Molly Holly. And the guest referee is none other than JYD. Now I'm calling it right down the middle. Right down the middle. All night. Sure. All day I, just, I simply have introduced him to other referees who no. know the business and have taught him She's what to look for that's trade. legal and She's not legal. She's been showing you the referees? No, all everything that I need to know. Yes. Legal holes. You're not supposed to be trained by someone. Yeah, I'm, that, that's sure. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. I'm protesting right yeah, from here. But if you want to see it, it's the Air Canada Center. Right? What's the date? June 16th. Absolutely. 7:30. CJ, tell me about 3D. 3D. Brand new single out. <laughs> Brand new single out. Can't get over you. Uh, it's doing awesome. Thank you. Brand new CDs in stores right now. And you guys uh, are going to tour, right? Yeah, we start shows. I think uh, June 3rd, July 13th, and uh, go right across Canada. Going to the States, going to Europe. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's been really a lot of fun. You know what? I bump into you probably once every six months or so. Yeah, exactly. It's great to see you, yeah, right. and it's great you. to have you on the show. Thanks Jamal, summer, I guess, too long for you. You, you guys yeah. were hoping to win the Stanley Cup, and I'm sure you'll start next season thinking exactly that. But what are you doing during the summer? What's up with you? Not too much. Just kind of training, doing charity uh, golf events and whatnot, and uh, really looking forward to uh, Noodles' party in the month of that. <laughs> what? <Yes. laughs> Noodles were coming. <laughs> Who's Noodles and why are we invited? We didn't get invited. Jamie McLennan. Just got to give him a call. Yeah, oh, okay. Him a call. So folks all across the country call Jamie McLennan and get into his party. <laughs> all right, I want to go back to Alan Iverson before we go. We've just got a few seconds left. Uh, the question I say is, should he have left college when he did, given the fact that you say, you know, he was just a kid when he came out? Well, I definitely knew his situation and uh, knowing the intricates that he was trying to help his family. And given that he was the number one, going to be the number one pick if he decided to go early, hey, you got to come out there and, you know, support your family. I mean, you can't, you know, can't get down on that. It's all about coming early, and sometimes it's about leaving late or leaving early. Are you going to resign in Toronto? I'm looking forward to the opportunity to play here in Toronto, and uh, I don't know what the future holds, but um, well, free agency. We talk a lot on this show about what sports should be about, and you two guys are exactly that. Guys, everybody, thanks for joining us on Off the Record. Catch us CTV Center. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Keg Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Michael Landsberg's wardrobe supplied by Grafton and Company. Get it at Grafton. Exactly. That's funny.